Welcome to the course on the Old Testament for the International Catholic University. I am Father Kenneth Baker. I'm the editor of the Homiletic and Pastoral Review, which is a monthly magazine for the Catholic clergy. And I have been uh, teaching the Bible for many years. And a few years ago, it turned out a book called Inside the Bible, going through all the books of the Old Testament and the New Testament. And so Dr. McInerney asked me if I would present this course on the Old Testament for the International Catholic University. I'm very happy to do that. During this course, we're going to cover the 46 books of the Old Testament. Now, the, the angle that I take on these books is to try and get at what the basic theme or idea is in each one of the books, and so for meaning and for understanding. There won't be uh, a lot of, uh, of exegesis or talking about uh, various Hebrew roots and things like that, or especially the source criticism. Uh, a great deal of the source criticism I'm going to leave out of this because I want to get at what the meaning of the book is. And there are certain themes that run through the Old Testament. If a person is a regular reader of the Old Testament, you come to see that certain ideas in the Old Testament recur over and over again. The basic thing, uh, basic part of the Old Testament is the first five books, which is called the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's the basis of the whole Bible because the historical books which come after that are a living out on the part of the, uh, of the Hebrew people and later the Israelites of the covenant arrangement, ship, arrangement that they made with, God, with the Lord, with the Lord Yahweh. And uh, the wisdom literature is a reflection on that of the wise man who lives according to the Torah or the law of God. So some of the themes that we're going to touch on in this course is the fact of that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And he is the master of human history. One of the geniuses of the of the Jewish people and the Hebrew people is to see that God's activity uh, is permeates human history. And so we see that when uh, the Israelites fail to be obedient to the covenant, God makes use of external forces like uh, the Assyrians and the Babylonians and, and, and the Greeks and the Romans and things like this in order to punish Israel. He doesn't send them a bolt of lightning from out of the sky, but he uses secondary causes. There's the notion of the covenant. We refer to the Bible as the, like the Old Testament and the New Testament. That idea of testament means covenant. It means an agreement. It's kind of like, in modern terms, like a contract almost between God and his people. Both sides are obligated to do certain things. The Israelites are required to obey the Ten Commandments, especially the First Commandment. The First Commandment is the most important, that is, to thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only and not any other gods. And the, as we know from reading the Old Testament, the Israelites failed on that over and over again. So that's a, that's a key notion. Another key notion is that sin running through the Bible, which means rebellion against God and rebellion against God's law. And one of the consequences of that is then being separated from God and being punished by him. We see that in the case of Adam and Eve, for example. Who, were, who sinned against the Lord and were expelled from the Garden of Eden. And likewise, the Jewish people who uh, worshipped idols instead of the true God were punished by God over and over again in order to, in order to purify them, not, not to obliterate them, but to bring them back to the practice of their religion that they had committed themselves to. Another idea is the temple. You might not be aware of the fact of the importance of the temple, but the temple runs through most of the Old Testament. And the idea of the temple is because that's God's presence with his people. We have that in the, when we sing at Christmas time, the songs about Emmanuel. Emmanuel means, you know, God with us. And so God is with his people. And that in the, the place where that is, the temple, especially the temple in Jerusalem. Another idea then that comes is that God is going to send a Messiah, the, the Christ, who's going to come 
to redeem his people. So there's this notion of messianism that runs through many parts of the Old Testament. We're going to touch on that also. Promise and fulfillment is another combination. That is, we find a lot of promises from God and then they are fulfilled. And uh, the prophets use this as a test of a true prophet as opposed to a false prophet. When a, a true prophet is one who prophesies that Jerusalem is going to fall to the Babylonians, the false prophets denied that. And the test of a true prophet is whether or not the prophecy comes true. Finally, the response of the Bible that God wants from those who read his word and from those who, were the, who received his revelation is faith. That is, acceptance of God, obedience to his law, and trust in him and, and following his will. So that, that, that's the, the human response. And we see that to a great extent in the Psalms, for example, of praise of God, of thanksgiving, of lamentation, and so forth in the Psalms. These various moods uh, that uh, all the human emotions that are expressed in the Psalms, we're going to see that when we cover the Psalms. So for this first uh, uh, lesson then, for the first uh, class, I want to cover the first three books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus. Now, so on the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis means, the, the word Genesis means origins. So this is the, the book of the origins of the world, of the universe, of man, and of the animals and the plants and everything here, that they're all created by the Lord God because of his goodness. And this is a theme that comes out that God created everything because of his goodness. He wanted to share his goodness with others. Because of that, he created the universe. He's the master of all the universe. And in the, in the Bible, the prophets especially, we see over and over again that the idols of the pagans are not gods. They say they have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can't hear. They have feet and they can't walk and so forth because they are creations of man. There's only one God, and that's the God of Israel who's manifested himself to Israel. He's re that's what the idea of revealing. He's revealed himself to Israel. And, but there's a universality here in the sense that his revelation is intended not just for Israel, but through Israel to all mankind, to all the world, to God's saving revelation uh, eventually in Jesus Christ.